In the aftermath of the Russian Revolution, the forces of communism were on the rampage. With the Western powers exhausted by World War I, the newly formed Soviet Union went in for the kill. Lenin's goal was to spread his revolution by force throughout Europe. But one country, only just recreated after Versailles, stood in the way. In this video, we will learn about how a young Poland courageously faced down the Red Army and saved the rest of Europe from falling under communist domination. This is Knowledge Voyage. <laughs> In 1917, the Russian Revolution gave communists control over the world's largest country. Shortly afterwards, World War I ended and there was a period of confusion. The communists could taste blood. According to communist theory, a global revolution was inevitable, but it may need force of arms to complete it. And force was something the newly formed Soviet Union was more than happy to use. The plan was to send troops into the heart of Europe and set up communist states in Germany, the Low Countries and France. But standing in the way was Poland. Poland had only just reappeared as a nation state after Versailles following World War I. It had spent almost 200 years wiped off the map, and now just months after reappearing, faced disappearing all over again. And to make matters worse, its new army was a jumbled mix. During World War I, Poles had been recruited to fight in the armies of the territory they lived in. Ethnic Poles had been spread out across the Russian, Austro-Hungarian and German empires, and ethnic Poles had fought in three different armies. They had different tactics, training quality and even weaponry. The Western powers could not keep Poland supplied, so Poland had to rely on weapons it could salvage from the ammo depots of disintegrating empires that had once controlled Poland. The Poles did, however, have some advantages. For one, they had patriotic fervour at their country being brought back from the dead. They also had religious fervour, and the Catholic Church warned Poland what fate awaited them if the Soviets succeeded. Finally, they had become experts in radio interception and cryptography. Many Poles fought in World War I for Germany and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Both of these countries used Polish radio operators to spy on the Tsar's Russia, because Polish is a closely rated language to Russian. When the newly formed Polish state was put back together, the Poles from all the different countries they had been radio operators in were able to combine their knowledge and become experts in spying on the Soviets. And it's just as well that they were. Radio intercepts prove what the Poles already suspected. That was, the newly formed Soviet Union was planning an invasion, and they were prepared to be utterly ruthless. The Soviets made use of cavalry and operated like a latter-day Mongol horde, laying waste to all in their path. At the core of each Soviet unit was a political officer to ensure political allegiance and hardened communists would be much less likely to surrender or desert than conscript troops. All political officers reported to Leon Trotsky, who was able to centrally control the units. And one of the most feared Soviet leaders was Mikhail Tukhachevsky. Tukhachevsky was a total nihilist whose lack of concern for his own safety saw him win six bravery medals in six months in World War I. Whilst in a POW camp, he stunned other inmates by bowing before an idol of a war god he invented. But Tokhachevsky was both anti-Jewish and anti-Christian, and Poland had large numbers of both. He planned to take out his hatred on both communities. The Polish intercepts had given the Poles an idea. If Poland pushed forces into Ukraine, they could help prop up an anti-communist Ukrainian state that would shorten the land border between Poland and the Soviet Union. However, this backfired, as the Polish move into Ukraine was cast in the global press as a quote, invasion. Furthermore, the Polish capture of Kiev was spun by the Soviet authorities as being an attack on the ancestral home of Russian culture, and many Russians flocked to fight Poland. The Soviets could now push into Poland. The use of cavalry allowed the Soviets to cover large distances in a day. Unlike the recently ended World War I, characterised by static trenches, this was very mobile. The Soviet forces routinely massacred and tortured Polish villages, and quote, enemies of the people in communist ideology, such as priests, were often killed first before the army moved on. As the Soviets rapidly advanced, Poland's position looked bleak. The fractured nature of the Polish army meant troops never knew if the line would hold, and troops feared being encircled, captured and killed. The Poles fell back to their capital city of Warsaw on the Vistula River. Many foreign countries wrote Poland off, and foreign embassies began evacuating their staff. The churches were packed with families praying for divine intervention to save them from the Soviets. But then things began to change. As the fight got closer to Warsaw, the Soviets noticed Polish resistance was becoming tougher. Lenin had sneered at the, quote, stupid patriotism of the Poles, but it was far from stupid in the way it galvanised resistance. On the feast of the Assumption Mary, reports came in that the Virgin Mary herself had been seen in the sky above Polish troops. Meanwhile, a miracle of a more tangible nature was taking place. A bold strike by Karnitsky's cavalry had seized control of a Soviet radio transmitter and the papers and plans of Soviet commander Shuvayevsky. The Poles set to work jamming and distorting Soviet radio communications, showing their expertise in communication. Father Ignacy Skorupka, a Polish priest, led troops at the front with a cross in his hand, calling on God to protect Poland. Inspired Polish troops surged forwards, but sadly, Father Ignacy was shot dead. 
As the Soviet advance began to slow under Polish resistance, the trap was sprung. The Poles had kept the Soviet armies in the dark with the communications blackout. This allowed Polish troops to move to the flanks and start pounding the Soviets from the sides to their complete surprise. From the skies, a specially formed unit of Polish-American airmen peppered the retreating Soviets with fire from their biplanes. Meanwhile, the advancing Poles saw evidence of Soviet atrocities. As the Soviets wheeled back under daring Polish charges, the Soviets were forced to admit that their situation had become, quote, catastrophic. Soviet troops retreated to East Prussia, where they surrendered to the neutral Weimar German government, and in Moscow, Lenin was stunned. The man who had so arrogantly predicted Poland was a pushover and a stepping stone to world conquest had been humbled. News of the Soviet defeat in Poland triggered uprisings against the Soviets in their own state, and Lenin was forced to sue for peace. The Poles and Soviets signed a peace deal in Riga in 1921, and Poland, and by extension the rest of Europe, had been saved. The war would have lasting consequences. For the Soviets, it snuffed out their dream of a global revolution. Instead, Stalin's view of socialism in one country became the driving force of Soviet policy. Stalin would also spend his early years in power ruthlessly purging and killing many of the main generals who had failed to capture Poland. Among them was the fearsome Tuchachevsky, whose nihilistic wish for death was finally realised. Another consequence of the Polish-Soviet war was it was so fast-moving, and military schools across the world assumed cavalry would play a big part in any future war. Sadly, the day of cavalry was over, as the Second World War would later prove. Maybe a different lesson could have been learned, and that war may have developed differently. Polish success in radio signals technology and codes in this war would prove vital a few short years later, as Poland invested heavily in spying on German codes. Polish cryptographers would escape to Britain, and their skills would be critical in breaking the fearsome Enigma code, and with it decisively leading to Allied victory. Poland would eventually fall to Soviet invasion in 1940, and Stalin, who still harboured resentment towards Poland's army for beating him in 1920, had large numbers of Polish army officers murdered at the Katyn Forest. The Soviets would control Poland until 1989, when Poland would become independent and communism would finally be defeated. Poland saved Europe from Turkish invasion at the Siege of Vienna, and in the Polish-Soviet War, this plucky new nation probably saved Europe once again. Thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, thank you.